Welcome back to Anamkara. We're going to talk about good news. We're going to talk about a gospel that is 100 proof good news. Powerful, transforming good news. When Jesus came and declared that he had come to announce the good news of the kingdom, he meant it was really good news. And this good news is all bound up in a new agreement that God has made between himself and mankind. It's called the New Covenant. Now, when you look in the Bible, the Bible's broken up into two covenants. You have the Old Covenant, or the Old Testament, and then the New Covenant, which is the New Testament. Now, a covenant is simply an agreement between two or more people. And God instituted a covenant in the Old Testament. One covenant that he instituted was between himself and Abraham. And this covenant, God said that it was going to be through Abraham that all the families of the earth would be blessed through the seed of Abraham. In fact, when God cut this covenant with Abraham, the Apostle Paul talks about this in the book of Romans chapter 3 and chapter 4 and in chapter 5 some. This new agreement that God made, when covenants were made, usually there were two parties. And they would usually go through a meal and then a, a ritual wherein sacrifices were usually offered and cut up. And each party would recite certain blessings that would come as they obeyed this agreement. And then if the agreement was ever broken, certain curses that would come upon them for breaking the covenant. Well, when God made this covenant with Abraham in Genesis chapter 15... Abraham was totally out of the picture. This is what Paul was talking about when he talked about God making this covenant and he swore by no one higher than himself. God said, this is what I'm going to do. This is how I'm going to bless and you don't have anything to do with it. And I'm swearing by my own name. I'm swearing by myself. So this covenant is guaranteed. This covenant can never be broken. This covenant will be fulfilled that all the families of the earth will be blessed through the seed of Abraham. And then, of course, you know that Israel came along and God instituted a relationship with the nation of Israel and He instituted it by means of a covenant. And this covenant was made through the law. God gave Israel the law. And remember, God said, Now, if you obey my law, here's all the blessings that will come to you. But if you disobey my law, these are the curses. Well, obviously, Israel could not keep the rules. They couldn't keep all the regulations. But God instituted a means whereby Israel could be having her sins covered for a period of time. It was the system of sacrifice. And so God gave them all kinds of sacrifices. And then remember, that once a year, on the holiest day of all, the high priest would enter into the Holy of Holies. The sins of the nation would be confessed. They would be, the, 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 the scapegoat would have the sins of the nation confessed on its head, be sent out into the wilderness. And then the high priest would enter and sprinkle blood onto the holy seat and the sins of the people would be covered, taken care of for at least another year. But Israel couldn't keep their part of the agreement. So God in the Old Testament said, you know what, I'm going to make a new agreement. And this new agreement is going to be one that I myself am going to fulfill. And this agreement is going to be completely different than all the other agreements before it. And he promised a new covenant, a new agreement. And this new agreement would come to us through His Son and the Son's sacrifice on the cross. In fact, in the book of Hebrews chapter 8, God said, For if the first covenant had been faultless, there would have been no need or no occasion or even a thought for a second covenant. For finding fault with them, He says, Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, when I will effect a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not like the covenant that I made with their fathers, on the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt, for they didn't continue in my covenant, and I didn't care for them, says the Lord. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, I will put my laws into their minds, and I will write them on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. And they shall not teach everyone his fellow citizen, and everyone his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for all will know me, from the least to the greatest of them, for I will be merciful to their iniquities, and I will remember their sins no more. That's a powerful statement. And as we continue looking at this new agreement, we're going to look at some of the differences between the two covenants, and I think you're going to see why the apostles got in so much trouble 
in the New Testament when they began to preach the new message of this good news. Remember, thank God for this new agreement and spend some time today beholding Him who's beholding you and smiling.